I am audible? Hello. Okay, guys, let me formally introduce myself. This is Suman from India. Okay, I volunteered as tech speaker at Mozilla. I have a few projects with uh, security projects with uh, Mozilla uh, security team and OWASP Foundation as well. So, as we speak, OWASP stands for Open Web Application Security Project. It's an online secu open security community. So, do I need to wait for a moment? It's not audible? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that too. This is fine. Okay. Good. Okay. Too many things. Am I audible now? Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. Over the past ten years, as we know, the web has evolved a lot. So with the evolution of the web. Um, the hackers' proficiency also has improved, so their goals are also changed. So, the, in the current generation, the goals of hacker is to steal money. It can be the mon real date, real money, or it can be the data that worth millions of dollars. So, to protect the users from such incidents, the responsibility lies with the application developers. So, when I speak about web applications, it lies with the web developers. So today I will be speaking about the threats which are posing for, posing for web applications and how you can detect these, these web vulnerabilities using the open security tools. So I am going to be talking about the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities. So among that the first one would be, okay this is me, that was one year ago photo, I know. So yeah, the first one would be the injection flaw. Okay. Well, this flaw occurs when the untrusted data is sent to the interpreter as part of a command or a query. So what this flaw does is, uh, it will, the untrusted data sent by the attacker, it will be interpreted by, uh, it will manipulate the interpreter to execute some uh, unintended, unintended operations. Let me try to un make you understand with the simple example. So, there are several types of injection flaws like SQL injection, LDAP injection, OS injection. So when I talk about the SQL injection, uh, it, hap it, is hap it will happen with the, so it will be just like, see the query here. This is the SQL query. What happens here is, a simple query which, is, uh, which will retrieve all the information from the account table uh, of a particular customer ID, but it is getting the customer ID from the URL like, in the, like this, so in, in the below one. So when the attacker sends an, uh, when attacker sends this kind of uh, data to the ID, it will inter the, it will manipulate the interpreter. So what what will be the result of this film will be it will retrieve all the information from the account table of all the accounts, irrespective of the account ID. So this is the SQL injection. So if I am successful in this one, and if I am the attacker, that would be my reaction. I'll be successful. So what are the goals that are achieved by uh, this particular hack? Information leakage, obviously. Disclosure of data, yeah. And the manipulation of stored data. It, um, that particular SQL injection, uh, SQL query which I have shown, it not might be only retrieving of data, it can manipulate the data inside the database as well. And the bypassing authorization controls, that's the aim. And next comes the broker authentication and session match management. So this flaw occurs when the application functions related to the broken authentication and related to the authentication and session management are not imp are properly imp implemented. So what does I mean by that? So, um, the, this particular uh, vulnerability, this is very extremely, uh, extremely dangerous because it not only exposes the confidential data of the particular company, but this will give the opportunity to the hacker to um, create a backdoor in the com in the company's website so let's say if so this what this will do is it compromises the password keys and session tokens of the application so what happens here so let's say the attacker got the uh, hijack the particular account so the attacker can do whatever the account holder has permission to do with so if he has uh, access the admin 
Ad, if you hijack the admin user uh, admin user account, you know what it can do to that particular company. So, so let's see here. This is a um, airline uh, web website, and if that particular airline website is allowing the URL rewriting in this way, it and exposing the session ID in this way. Let's say this particular URL is used to view the ticket of the particular user. And if he want to share the uh, ticket with his friend, he might have uh, shared the li this link with his friend. And in that case, and uh, let's say this uh, particular website doesn't uh, de didn't uh, didn't Im implement the session timeout also. So with this particular URL, the session ID, the session continues in the friends in his friends browser as well, and. He can just uh, use the credit card, all uh, credit card details of this user, and he can book on his own with, uh, in the same session. So the victim doesn't know that this is happening in the back end. So when he sees the credit card bill at the end, he don't know what to do. So yeah, what ha what are the hacker goals here? It definitely caused a privacy violation, and it, that is that can be termed as identity theft. Yes. So XSS scripting. This is the uh, third one. So XSS flow occur when the untrusted data is sent to the web browser by application without proper validations or escaping. So let me try to explain this with a simple example here. Here is the attacker, website, and victim. And attacker stores the malicious script in the website. Victim doesn't know about that and victim browses this particular website. I mean, uh, browsing in the sense, he will be sending a request to that particular website and the appropriate response will be coming to the web, uh, from the website to the victim browser, but along with this malicious script attached to it. So the browser uh, will execute this particular response from the website and we don't know what the script will do. It may just send the, here it is sending this uh, cookie to that attacker's server. It might send that one, or it might. It is up to the uh, uh, attacker what he can do with the script if this vulnerability is present. So the hacker goals would be cookie stealing, obviously. And if the script is uh, uh, making a pop up, that is alert pop up on page. And uh, if the script is executed and it may redirect to the other website as well, and executing browser exploits. Next, insecure direct object reference. So, the thing is, this happens. This actually, uh, the, um, with the complexity nowadays, the websites are very, pretty much complex. I mean to say, say, for example, a website is used by hundreds of users. Let's say hundred users. They might have different privileges. I mean, each user, depending upon their privileges, they might be going into particular level of particular pages. So if the developer, the web developer, uh, exposes a reference to the internal implementation object such as file or a directory, then it's gone. So it, let's say, for example, I have the, uh, I, I was the authenticated user for this particular website. And I go, I'm just downloading a particular PDF from the website. So in that PDF URL, if that PDF which I, which I'm got to download, if it is a directly referencing to the particular ID, so I can just manipulate that. Let me try to make you understand with this example here. It's the same thing. Like said, start from accounts where account ID is equal to. This is a prepared statement here. Instead of uh, and this account is this particular parameter in the third URL which you are seeing, it is directly exposed. And if it is not verifying, if I rewrite this particular, uh, like not my account, and if it is not verified for at the server side, and if it get executed, it will retrieve the uh, account, uh, account it is of that my, my wish, I mean the hacker's wish. So next comes the mis security misconfiguration. This is pretty much simple. See, for example, um, I have a Tom, I have installed Tomcat server in my system. Many of us used Tomcat server in the previous days. 
So with the Tomcat server, we will get a default admin credentials. In the same way, if the web app, so let's say you have application stack. Application stack will have different layers. So each layer will have the default passwords or something. So if these default passwords are not modified or not removed, attacker can easily get into the user's default credentials, log into the particular layer, and that will be the gateway for him to go, go into the application. So that must be taken care. So here see the scenario, that's the same thing. The app server domain console is automatically installed. And if the default pa admin pa passwords are not removed for that particular admin page, that can be the gateway for the hacker to get into the application. So we need to take care of that. And the sensitive data exposure. This is the heading itself is says what it means. So before explaining about this, I would like to differentiate data into two types. Data that is stored, data that is getting transmitted. So that is nothing but data at rest and get data getting transmitted. If you are not following a, if you're following a weak algorithm to encrypt these things, this data, that can be the responsibility from your side. That will be the, you will be the responsible to uh, initiate the flaw. And if you store it in the clear text, it then sole responsibility lies with you because you are responsible for uh, data exposing of that particular data. So here, what the example states is, okay, I'm an authenticated user. I have logged into the particular um, website. If the pages which I am browsing are not, uh, don't use the SSL certification, the data that is transmitted without SSL certification can be clear test or a weak encrypted data. So that is the flaw here. And missing functional level access control. This is my favorite thing because I have exploited this in my school day, in my university days. So uh, when whenever, um, let's see, let me tell you, tell you like this. So uh, our college used to post the results in the portal. So the thing is, when, when, I, when I would like to get into the portal and see, the, see my results, I will be uh, logging into my, with my student profile. So it will be something like www.myuniversity.com slash results slash roll number is equal to my roll number, some one, two, three, four. So if the functional level checks are not done at the server side, I can ju I just made my ro my beside roll number one two three five. Let's say it. I can just edit the one two three five there. If the access control checks are not done on this at the server side, that will display the results of my friends as well, and we took care of that later. But we have exploited that one. Next comes the cross site request forgery. This is pretty much like. Um, okay, let me show you like, tell you like this. There is a, uh, see, for example, this particular, uh, the first URL here, if uh, this is sending some amount for the destination account, and let's say this is in a uh, authenticated state. I mean, the user is logged in. Even after logged in also, if this, this kind of, um, URL is getting executed without ex uh, without encrypting anything here. So a hacker can restructure this particular request. That is nothing but forged request. He's forging that request. He's embedding this particular request in say in the image, and he can make this image available when the when the user is logged in. So when the authentication session is running on. And when such this kind of image is popped up and then the user clicks on it, inside the embedded image, you can see the script which will may transfer the amount to his account. So this is something, this is called forge request, cross set <coughs> forge request. And using components with known vulnerabilities. Everyone loves using third party applications, third party libraries, because yeah, it makes our work easy, but whenever you are using a third party library in your application, it is, the responsibility also lies with you to check whether that, li that library is up to date or whether any security uh, flaw is there. 
if it if the flaw is there whether that particular third party library has uh, announced any patches and if you are updated or not so you need to take care of that and the thing and let's uh, okay the next one is heartbleed this is the sole example of that uh, this particular flaw anyone know about the heartbleed it was a mo Yes. Exactly. It uh, it uh, it was this flaw has occurred in OpenSSL library. Let me say the version number to be precise. It will be something like one point zero point one, one point zero point one two, one point zero point one f. Those were the specific versions uh, for this, for the which detected this vulnerability. After patching, also, after patching to that uh, the next version, it was fine. But whatever the damage needs to be done to the applications which are depending on it, it was already done because it was publicly announced that uh, that vulnerability has been publicly announced, and it took while for uh, applications which are using this to uh, patch it to the later versions. So that was the thing. So unvalidated unvali redirects and forwards. So since my talk is getting recorded, I don't want to say which way you can watch free online movies. But if you go into, if you click on the such uh, websites, you will be flooded with add-ons and pop-ups. There is a huge possibility that one of the pop-up can be redirecting you to the malicious uh, scripts or malicious websites. So take care of that. Don't watch free online movies. Watch authenticated sources. So this can be uh, these two URLs can be something like these two URLs can like when you click on that uh, add on uh, um, pop up this might be the two URLs which will be going there. So that winds up the top ten security things very quickly. But when now let's see what are the open web application security tools which you can use to detect these vulnerabilities. The first one would be Vega vulnerability scanner. This is built. In, this is built in Java. It's a, it supports GUI environment, and it can perform these manual uh, these things. These tests. Um, it can perform. And the second one would be the Grabber. Uh, this is built in Python. It doesn't have any GUI environment. You need to use the command console for this one. I per personally recommend it to use for your personal use, like uh, for, for smaller web applications. If it's the large, bigger applications, it will take time for it. So it can I can I will never recommend it for the commercial use, obviously. Next comes the Z attack proxy. How many of you know about Z attack proxy? If you are a pen tester, awesome. So it's more called uh, is called as ZDAP is ZAP. So. If you are starting your career as a pen tester or if you are interested to uh, know about pen testing, this, this tool can be used as a learning module as well because uh, obviously it's easy to install. We have a um, document, proper documentation and if you, how many guys use IRC channels here? So if you are on IRC, WebSec Tools is a, WebSec tools is a channel where you can uh, directly interact with the developers of this particular tool, and we have lo it supports localization documents as uh, localization as well. So it won't be language would not be a barrier for you to learning. And we obviously we have international team of volunteers. I'm a Zap in English for India. So coming to Zap functionality, we have a list of uh, things which it can do. I will be showing a brute force attack on a web portal in the demo. So that the list continues this well as well. So once coming to demo, okay. What just said that? Oh fine. Can you see anything? Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. I'm hosting a vulnerable um, web po uh, web application on Tomcat server. So this is, uh, since we are in the learning stage, I am just using this to show you how the things happen. Um, so this is the body store. 
this is a uh, this is a vulnerable application and the zap ui looks like this let me start a complete new session so. okay i can split it into three parts this side uh, left right and bot footer uh, on the left side you can see the size which are okay when you proxy this particular tool with a particular browser whatever the browser what are the browsing thing you are doing that can be visible on the uh, left side on the on the right side here you can without proxy to the browser you can just directly write whichever uh, website you want to attack okay when when i'm saying this one clearly i want to say if that particular website owner allows you to attack attack it i don't do that so so request and response tabs for the particular thing which you are doing and the bottom you can see the results of your attacks which you are performing so i have uh, let me show you how to proxy a particular browser with this uh, tool okay it's taking time fine so if you scroll down here you can see the local proxy so this 8081 port you need to configure with the browser you want to configure with see let's say example tools options advanced network settings here i have uh, in this way you will need to proxy with the same port needs to be here this should be syncing with this one along with that uh you need to download a uh, download the ssl certificate from this dynamic certificate ssl certificate and you need to add this as an uh, add this certificate certificate for the browser on which you are performing the things so once you click on generate it will come it will down you will get downloading a certificate it will be something like this one so you need to just add it to the browser uh, so for adding this one we need to go to hold on one moment certificates view certificates under this one you need under this one you can see i have already imported this particular certificate here you go just click on the import and import that particular certificate here once these things are done when these both are linked the tool and the browser you can start running say for example let me just see under this okay fine okay thank you under size you can see whatever the things are uh, activity are happening in the browser that will be reflected here so let's uh, let's say if i do fuzzing on this particular bot store um should, for doing that we need to generate this we i admin admin something i don't i really don't know the password of this one but i just require this particular thing so go to the post event go double uh, set the particular password right click on this one go to the first so what does what does this do means uh, we will have a payload file so in the payload file you will have hundreds of passwords so it will be running against running against this payload and and what and if the password in that particular thing is matching this one you will be authenticated into the website so i have there are bunch of payloads you can download from the internet i have done that so let's add the payload and let's go for your okay use and password and here mm, okay which one we want like passwords okay so here you can see this is the payload this is a which it will be running against so add this okay go to the options here and click on follow redirects so why i'm doing this is let's say luckily we got the password 
it should the scope should not remain there it should penetrate into the website so that's why we'll do the follow redirect start the further so the thing he doing is it will run again as the each one let's uh, let's pause this one it will take a while so here you can see header response body so if let's see here uh, everything remains the same because it's not authenticated so it's just checking um, if how to differentiate be between whether it is authenticated or not whether it's going in or not whether the particular text is working or not here uh, if it is uh, working you, you will see the increase in the response body the size of this one so that in that way you can uh, validate whether it's working or not so for now it has not worked so yeah this is the way to do fuzz on using this particular tool and i think that's pretty much it Shoot me up with a Q&A. Do you have any questions? <laughs>